You're listening to the Lou Stokes Podcast, real and inspiring conversations with individuals from all over the world who have become their own icon. Be inspired to take action and step into your best stylish life. Welcome to the Lou Stokes Podcast. On this episode, I am talking to the wonderful Meg Charland, hypnotherapist and coach. So welcome, Meg. How are you doing? I'm really good. Thanks, Lou. And thank you very much for having me here today. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. It's a pleasure to have you on. So Meg and I met maybe about two years ago, three maybe, I'm not sure now. But she is a wonderful person and I'm really excited for us to be having this conversation today as she has been a big part of my journey and she has got so much to share with us. So Meg, take it away. Please tell us a bit about you and exactly what you do. Okay, so I'm a coach and hypnotherapist and I really focus my work on working with this wave of incredible ambitious women that are rising up in the world right now and Mm -hmm. primarily I work with women in helping them really redefine what success means to them so that they can go out into the world and flourish and make impact in the way that really suits what they want rather than being defined by their community their family or society's expectations expectations of what success is in the aim of really women beginning to live and communicate with a richer sense of self in their inner world as well as their outer world so that they can live with this rich confidence so they can really so make power and impact in whatever I'm really privileged to continually work with women that are essentially redefining their own success stories amazing love it absolutely love it um talking about inner world so as you know you know what I do as a stylist is really working from the inside out and I'm very passionate about the relationship that we have with ourselves And then that reflecting in our outer world, so really working through the system I created called the Icon System. And I really wanted to talk to you because of your background and everything you do about our inner world and why it is so important to cultivate an inner world and how, when we do that, how that reflects in our outer world. Yeah, so, you know, in society generally, um, we are taught for external validation and gratification. Mm. And so that's why I love what you do from the first time we connected, because you were one of the first people that I felt that I'd come across that were talking about style from a reflection of who you are inside, rather than fitting an accustomed fashion or a shape or a size that, that you're meant to be and that so many f- people feel the pressure. Um, I trained originally as a professional dancer, so I guess that really related to me that there was very much a, a constant pressure when we grew up of of being physically externally a certain way. And as I grew up from a young age in that industry, what I really started to notice is that people were essentially falling away from their dreams because of the pressures from the outside world. And so really at a very young age, around 15, I I started to work with um, holistic therapies, kinesiology, touch for health. Mm-hmm. I grew up meditating, yoga, and all of these practices to really feel like I didn't feel I fit in, I guess, because my inner world was intuitively telling me that worthiness was something about when you looked in somebody's eyes and you could see their soul and have this incredible conversation Mm -hmm. rather than walking into a room dressing to fit the room that you're in. And so for me, this idea of the inner world is actually about, particularly with women that I work with, but this is relevant for everybody. This idea of people, we're not educated to learn and understand who our selves are, who we are born as. And Mm -hmm. we are, if we're not careful, products of our environment. And so what I became very empowered when I started to study performance psychology, which then led into coaching and then hypnotherapy, is that actually we have the power to not only find and get to know ourselves, our vulnerabilities, our challenges, 
But the really fun part is that we can actually learn now. We are equipped with the skills to rewire the programming of our inside world so that we once thought that we were fixed as that's the way I am. And Mm -hmm. that's not true anymore. And so that inside world in terms of who we are is that when the conditions are met within our heart and our mindsets and our intellectual self, our spiritual self, and we become really attuned to what we want, which society often projects out to the world that we shouldn't do because we'd be selfish, is that then something very incredible is that we can actually start cultivating that in our outward world. Mm -hmm. So it's always, which complements exactly what the work you do with your clients is that when you get to know yourself, you can then go out into the world and start manifesting and cultivating and creating the world that you want to create. And for me, that was, I guess the word freedom comes up because you can heal and elevate from anything if you're guided and supported in a way that allows you to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. And as you know, obviously you've trained as a hypnotherapist and I'm just interested to know how, how that's changed your life. Like how has hypnotherapy changed your life and what was it that made you want to share this with others? So I actually brought into a business program because I shifted my work online and um, this is going back a little way now. And part of the the service was that he had an affiliate hypnotherapist and I got a month's complimentary hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away that my mindset has always been pretty strong. I come from a background where, you know, my parents were able to openly love me and there were as all families things that (laughs) happened that affected me and blocked my mindset but my mind I've always had an innate trust in myself and my capabilities thanks to my parents but what came up is I couldn't get past a certain earning capacity I couldn't get past a certain fitness level I felt like I was blocking myself and within a couple of hypnotherapy sessions what I realized is that I had some very deep subconscious settings around how women are and how mums are if they're working mums and so every time I was getting opportunities come through the door up until this point of hypnotherapy I was essentially blocking them without even realizing that they were coming into my world because I had a subconscious belief that I couldn't be a good mum and an incredibly successful and financially prosperous woman if I was going to actually achieve being a good parent. And it was that hypnotherapist that uncovered that. And it opened up my world because when I took what actually wasn't the belief of myself, but of something that had been projected on me away and identified intentionally how I wanted to live my life, then my world started to open up and my career started to transform in an incredible way. And so that was why I started And I also had a driver that I had a really, um, really ill family member Mm -hmm. and they didn't have the money for therapy and the opportunity came for me to train. And one of the results of an improvement for this particular illness was that hypnotherapy has great results. So I dedicated hundreds of hours of studying to ensure that I could support this this member of my family in her healing journey because it felt like the right thing to do. And I also had a responsibility to my clients, the incredible women I was serving, that if I was releasing blocks of a lifetime within two, three or four conversations, then that would take the equivalent of hours and hours of coaching or conversational therapy Mm -hmm. that if they were investing their money, I felt like I had a responsibility that I'm a bit of a top performer. I like to, you know, (laughs) get at the top of my game is that I felt like I had to go and train in it because otherwise I would be doing an injustice to my clients Mm. by taking their money and their investment, which is a huge thing for women to invest in themselves and not be able to give them this service. So they were kind of, it was like a journey for myself, a journey for my family and a journey for my clients, really. Amazing. That's beautiful. And like you just touched on 
on the coaching. So how would you say hypnotherapy is, is so different from coaching? Okay, so when we go into a hypnotic state, we're going into what we call the theta state. So mm -hmm. that is the deep depths of the subconscious mind. And through really clever conversation, we allow, we essentially shut off the conscious mind, which is where most of us spend most of our time. And that's the critical part, that's the linear part, thinking mm -hmm. part of our brain, if you like. And so we can't reprogram through conversation with the conscious mind as, as effectively and quickly as when we're in theta state because theta state is our memory bank system so when we open it up in hypnosis what happens is essentially the mind does really believe what we tell it when we're in theta state which is why children between naught to seven are so susceptible they're like maximum sponge because they're in theta state all of the time so when we're adults, we're not there all the time. So we have yeah. to get into that state. And when we get into that state, the real truth from the memories come out when we have a conversation. But also it's able to absorb new possibilities or ways of thinking or feeling that our family or our society weren't able to teach us when we were younger and we can so neuro-linguistics programming NLP is a really effective way to shift that programming but the in terms of the research what it shows is it's compared to six conversations of hypnotherapy to 600 sessions being research that's the equivalent of how much longer it takes through talking therapy. So compared to six hours, compared to 600 hours. Wow, that's insane. Talking therapy, which is, yeah, and and the actually percentage of recovery rate is something astronomical, like from 93% from hypnosis of six sessions to 36% improvement rate with psychotherapy. So that why it's so much faster because we essentially you know often when somebody goes to a coach or a stylist we or whatever has a breakup and they go to a hairdresser and they want a new look mm -hmm. they think they're going for the new look but they're going for a bigger reason that they don't realize yeah absolutely. and you know my job as a coach is to get to the depths of the core to get the greater transformation and what a lot of us through talking therapies, if we don't trust people, we have to innately build a very long relationship with a coach or therapist um, because we have to realise that they're not the same as maybe the because we're in this heightened relaxation state. The mind can open up and we can share our truths a whole lot quicker than if we're in conversational therapy too. Yeah, absolutely. It's so true what you're saying about the trust element. I'd never actually sat and thought about that before, but it's definitely vital when you're working with a therapist or a coach. Whereas, like you said, hypnotherapy, it's like you don't need to go through that that lengthy process to to be able to open up, I guess, right? Yeah, and I, I think... A really big part like with all coaches and therapists whether hypnotherapists or talking therapy you know you're you're really a huge amount of your training is is all geared to creating trust but when we're in the conscious mind setting it's that skeptical part of us so when we are awake that mm -hmm. is activated whether we like it or not so however good a therapist is at soothing and, and allowing somebody to trust the fact is when we're in our conscious mind rather than our subconscious, it's going to be more skeptical. So we just easily, you know, hypnosis is essentially a heightened state of relaxation. So when we feel relaxed in the body, the mind feels safe. And that's the premise of what hypnosis really allows us to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've experienced it with you and I absolutely loved it and it, it's funny because some people when I've mentioned to people oh yeah I've done some hypnotherapy before and they're like oh what's that like meditation I'm like no it's different but because I'm not a professional I'm never really sure how to explain it could you just touch on on what the differences are there yeah 
So I mentioned the theta state. So with mm. hypnotherapy, what it really is about is getting you to this depth of heightened optimum relaxation. So in meditation, you are guided through a relaxation and you mm -hmm. will be dabbling into moving into the theta state. But the conversation is carefully designed. So it is essentially a conversation with your eyes closed. And it can feel like meditation with a goal, essentially, yeah. but it's a lot deeper. So when we go into theta state, our senses heighten um, and we become more susceptible to observing our memories, almost like in movies and um, like really creative ways. It's like a movie unfolds in your mind. And that's there all the time, but we're just not educated in our world to tune into that. And so when we go into what we call this theta state, whether you're sitting or lying down, it's not like in the movies where, you know, it's this truth serum that you pour everything out or <laughs> there's this sense that, you know, there's amnesia or people not waking up because it's yeah. not actually sleep. Or brainwash. It's heightened relaxation. <laughs> that yeah, <before>. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, the whole idea of hypnosis and very much with the lady that I trained with is is really geared to the person learning that they really can connect and listen and educate themselves because they're their own boss. They're their mm. own creator. So if you are feeling like you can't or don't know how to love in your life through hypnotherapy, you can learn how to do that if you're finding comfort through food or over exercising because you have some like inner loneliness going on. You can connect to that loneliness and the mm. parts of you that reach for the food or, or the obsessive going to the gym. And you can connect with that part of you and educate it that that doesn't have to be the way it behaves. And that's why it's so powerful. And very often, like I said, people come to accelerate their business. And then before they know it, like they're healthier, they've lost maybe um, some weight that they wanted to lose, but weren't really able to before, um, you know, their relationships improve, all of these byproducts happen. Because when you start healing, those damaged parts of us that want to protect us, those voices mm. that go, don't love again, you'll get hurt. When we heal those, suddenly what happens is you can start seeing, hearing and being in the world in a different way. Oh, God, absolutely. I think, and you know this from what I've talked to you about when, since I was going through this burnout. And as soon as I started to do the hypnotherapy with you, it was like, oh, I'm actually allowed not to be a workaholic because that was one of my kind of addictions, yeah. would I say. Um, I've always been like an overachiever and like nothing is ever good enough according to, you know, my mind, my inner critic. And so I remember yeah. our first conversation and after that first session, I was just like, no, actually, this is like, if this feels right for me and I allow myself to rest and I allow myself to give myself space, then things are going to change. Like, and I can f be the person who I really am. I don't need to be this overachieving workaholic for who? Yeah. And so it was kind of this realization that as soon as I started to tap into this in more into this inner world because as you know I've you know long time yogi and meditation practitioner and teacher but after hypnotherapy it was like it, it, there's this other layer that's kind of for me unexplainable because mm. I mean I even signed up for this new fitness um program after we did our first session I don't know if I actually told you that but no, <laughs> now you, you know but and I'm like loving it and I was really unsure about it and I felt really stuck and I was like oh but as soon as we did our session a couple of days later I signed up for it and I was just like it felt natural and so I guess what I'm getting at is it's like you start doing things from your essence rather than like thinking mm. so you're not doing from the, the the thoughts or the shoulds or the mind you're doing it more from your heart of what yeah. feels right and so it's just really connecting into that those feelings and and yeah and how you want to feel rather than the shoulds and oh I have to do this and I've got to do that and and which which takes me into style actually and how like 
we think we should wear certain things and we think we should follow trends and and you know there is an element especially for women um about how you know if we're not dressing in a certain way then we won't fit in or again body image um you know if when if we don't look a certain way back in the 90s it was very much like the thin you know women yeah now it's all about having like lots of curves and you know being very curvaceous and kind of more like Kim Kardashian than Kate Moss now and it's like we're forever being told that we're not enough on this kind of subliminal level and then like with my clients I see them not wanting to wear certain things when they really want to but they feel like if they wear that then that's like oh how am I going to wear that because you know it's not on trend or it's like I've never worn that before or I'm just wearing the same old thing all the time when really they're way more creative and way more connected and but they just haven't allowed their self-expression to come out and it's that is so powerful and so often that self-expression is likely to have come out in their childhood, but somewhere along their lines, either they've been told that they can't wear things because it's not, it doesn't suit them or it's not appropriate. Yeah. Or even potentially worse than that, they've been around their family where their family members, they've heard family members talking about friends or other family members judging them for what they're wearing. So though through the child's eyes, the creativity of how they express themselves through clothes gets stumped because they believe that they will be isolated and taken outside of the tribe and judged if they wear something expressive, different, controversial or, or whatever it may be. And, and that it, it is so common. I mean, you know, I, I think like you said, in the nineties, we, we were really kind of brought up with that sense of girl power, but equally being part of a pack. Yeah. And, you know, whether it was Spice Girls or whatever <laughs> else that was happening in the world, there was this sense of collective female unity, which mm. is really great. But the thing that comes with that type of unity is that if you don't cut the mustard with what everybody else thinks is right, you're then isolated from the unity. So anybody that has any susceptibility of loneliness doesn't want to rock the boat because it feeds their isolation and their feelings of loneliness within. And so fashion then becomes a safety net for people rather than self-expression, which, you know, is is really sad. And, you know, I, I love clothes, but it took me years to connect with what I wanted to wear and mm. going into a room rather than feeling like this is what I should wear because it's a dinner or it's a, a charity event or whatever it might be. Yeah. And actually going, this is what I'm feeling today. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about that before, haven't we? About how, like, instead of being like, oh, how am I feeling? It's like, well, how do I want to feel? Like, if I'm going yeah. out somewhere or just generally everyday dressing, like becoming more intentional about it is yeah. for me the most important thing. And, and again, when we're connected to our inner world and we cultivate the relationship we have with ourselves and we know more about ourselves and understand ourselves on a deeper level, we then can start to become more intentional in every area of our life. And the way we see ourselves completely changes, which then has a domino effect on the way we show up and dress. Absolutely. And that domino effect, it's really important to catch here. And you mentioned like, you know, you're a yogi, you've done meditation for years and all of these things. And whether it's yoga or fashion or fitness, whatever it is, Mm. These things are really powerful, but if your inner world isn't connected and you're disconnected, they essentially become like the cover up because they all in some ways make us feel good, but they make us feel from the external. And so if we're not doing the inner healing to the foundational insecurities and and the areas that are blocking us, you know, doing lots of yoga, meditation, fitness, dressing nicely, wearing loads of makeup and all of those things can become an obsession to actually deflect off the fact that our inner world is unhappy. And that's why it's so important. You know, what I love what you do is that it's about exploring your inner world and then dressing to that rather than using your external world of clothes to fix you and put a mask or a face on that everything's okay. And that's a real difference, which is so, so important. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the fashion world, it's still got a lot, a lot of work to do, but slowly, slowly people are, you know, changing and becoming more aware. Now all these alternative therapies like hypnotherapy and like coaching is massive now and, you know, past life regressions and all the different yeah. types of therapies that we can do. So I think people are really realizing how disconnected we all have been as a society and how, you know, what really matters is, is the relationship we have with ourselves first, then yeah. it's the relationship with others, right? And it's, it's, it's vital to our well-being to just really cultivate that. And that's what I always talk to with my clients as well, because it's like, yeah, we, we can buy some really amazing things for you and dress you up. But if you're not feeling connected, you're after two weeks, you're not going to like anything that, you know, we've decided that, yeah, or you've decided rather that works for you. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, for me, it's important as a stylist is like, I'm not telling people what to wear. I'm helping them tap into that creativity and authenticity yeah. because it's so easy to tell someone to what to do. Oh yeah, wear that because of this or that. But then really they're not cultivating their own creativity and so I think, you know, the world of hypnotherapy and coaching is so powerful. And I'd love for you to tell me, you know, any success stories that clients have had, like of you combining, you know, the two together. And Yeah, so, oh, wow, there's so many. Okay, so uh, one was like a huge business coach, international business coach, and we had three sessions to get like very long sessions together and they essentially transformed and started to shift the whole way that they did business so uh, they realized that actually where they were at isn't what they were selling and so suddenly they took a complete u-turn and shift in their business and all it was is through our safe sanctuary space that we created together that we connected with what success looked like what her biggest fears were and actually started to reinforce and teach the mind that all of those goals and dreams she wanted are possible, are open to her and conforming to her industry isn't the way that she was going to get what she wanted. And so those types of areas are really powerful. Mm. Um, and then I get um, a lot of women, actually a very common loop to the stories that you share in terms of your drive for success, you know, being a top performer, wanting external validation and, and pushing and got that voice to achieve. So a lot of the women that I work with, they may be kind of very big on Instagram or spaces like that. And their outer world to everybody else is looking really fulfilled, or they may be a director of a big company, um, or they may be an entrepreneur on a smaller mm -hmm. scale that really vary them. But the most common area is that their outer success to everybody is that they presume that their problems aren't big problems. And they also have a sense of feeling like a failure if they say something that they find really hard. So some of the most beautiful success stories are actually of women that are out doing their thing in their industry and at home they're suffering in silence mm. like disconnection with their with their lover or convincing themselves that they can't hold a relationship or have children and we we work on that but then what happens is the byproduct because I believe in alignment we have connection to ourselves connection to the people in our world and connection to our purpose and if you imagine them in a triangle that it, the energy flows around all of them as we elevate them all is that as we worked with these women in their personal lives of their intimacy of their relationship with their own reflection with their body through hypnosis hmm. suddenly they start putting themselves on different stages on bigger stages of bigger opportunities because they're no longer scared of being seen or judged and they release the fears that they maybe have projected onto them as a child, a child of, of not being good enough. And so outwardly, I mean, one woman literally tripled her income within three sessions. We, we wow. caught something that she was sabotaging herself with. She reduced the amount she worked because she's a mum of two. And 
she now like she she did no exercise I'm talking like nothing and she now runs in a really balanced way four times a week her husband really struggles with mental health and mm-hmm. actually it was destroying her soul the worry and she doesn't hold that anymore she has a different space she creates an incredible environment for her family and so not only is her business flourishing, but every corner on that triangle is growing and she's now investing in property and thinking out of the box. And, the, you know, it's just case study after case study of things like that. I I worked with a 70 year old healer. Wow. It's just incredible. But a, a, a counselor and healer, but she actually had, hadn't slept since she started the menopause 20 years ago. Jeez. And at the same time, her husband had been diagnosed with cancer. Wow. And so we, we released a lot of her fears about going to sleep and not and waking up mm. and him not being alive and, and all these kinds of energies. And for the last 18 months, she slept every single night and wow. it's deep sleep. And her, so her whole energy, she looks younger now than what she did five years ago, because not because of what I did, it's just from a conversation we had. Yeah. And she was ready. She was ready to face something that felt uncomfortable and have a conversation to make a transition to get a more graceful, kinder way of living. And for me, that's what hypnosis really achieve and so a byproduct is money goes up but I really believe that richness is more than money so you know that is a byproduct of of any good investment potentially that that may happen but that really is a byproduct of the work that myself and many hypnotherapists do because it's really about allowing people to connect with who and how they want to be in the world and Mm. and the kind of people they want to connect with and then generally the rest really in a manifesting term starts to look after itself yeah absolutely what's that um carl jung saying he who looks outside dreams he who looks inside awakens exactly beautiful uh, i mean it it's just beautiful isn't it and that's why like I live in Norfolk in my country cottage in my sanctuary (laughs) is that I realize that when I go inwards and awaken every day in my life because I create a very peaceful space it allows me to work with the women in the world that are out there living a very busy life Mm. and so I can very attentively give them the care the support and the opportunity for them to walk through because I'm in a peaceful space. And so, you know, when I stepped into my career being a way of being rather a thing that I did, nice. that's when I began to, to, to awaken really and, and to serve people that are my, you know, just an absolute inspiration. Beautiful. Beautiful, Meg. Thank you so much. What a beautiful and powerful conversation we've had. Before we go, I would love for you to just leave a couple of words of wisdom to our listeners. Wow. Um, Okay. So (laughs) every single person listening now is listening for a reason. Mm. And they're listening with a sense of belief, even if it's a tiny part of you, that you were born with something magnificent inside you with a true potential that runs through your being. And if your environment up to now hasn't given you the faith, the hope, the belief that you can go and achieve anything, then any day is a day to start connecting with a seed of hope to create an environment for you to grow and flourish because the world needs you more than you realize. You are more magnificent than you realize. And when you choose to slow down and to face your truth with support around you, your world really can open up. And that may seem far away, it may not, but to trust that there are your people out there that can help you, can guide you because you deserve to to flourish in the world because you're important. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Meg. Before we go, please tell our listeners where they can find you online. I'll also include it all in the show notes. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram, Meg Charlotte Coach, and my uh, website is called The Success Sanctuary, and you can go ahead and, and visit there. And I am just, I love 
beautiful conversations with people. So I hold, open up my container, my space, <laughs> and every day I receive emails from people just asking about hypnotherapy, sharing a problem, sharing uh, a, an insight. And so c- come on, see me on Instagram, send me a DM, open up a conversation because uh, you know, the way I run my work is it's boutique, it's personal and it's specialized. So if you want a conversation, I'm absolutely here to answer your questions and, and support you in moving through your incredible journey. Amazing. Thank you so much, Meg. And if you feel like you want to learn more about hypnotherapy or talk to Meg, do reach out. Um, I've done it with her quite a few times now and it's absolutely incredible. She's an amazing person beautiful from the inside out and look forward to hearing your comments lots of love thank you meg ciao ciao thanks lou take care bye ciao bye bye i hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you did please subscribe to the loose Stokes podcast rate and review in the apple podcast spotify or wherever you're tuning in from i'd be so grateful also check out the show notes to learn more about my guest and learn more about me on my website www.loustokes.com until next time be inspired take action and become your own icon 